Toph Beifong is known for her strong, unchanging, and rock-like personality. And at age 12, remarkably, she was already one of the most powerful earthbenders in the world. I never knew. Your daughter's amazing. How exactly is she so powerful? Let's analyze Toph's many skills and break down how her earthbending informed her personal development throughout the series. We'll do this by focusing on three categories, raw power, adaptability, and growth. You know, the real me. So let's start by examining the strength and raw power of Toph Beifong. When we first met Toph, it was immediately clear that she could hold her own, able to take down dangerous opponents from the Earth Rumble even when grossly outnumbered. But it wasn't until she joined the gang on their journey that we saw what she was really capable of. Not only was she able to hold her own against even the most esteemed Earthbenders, but throughout her travels, she displayed an absolute mastery of classic earthbending techniques, such as rock walls, earth skating, rock armor, earth tunneling, and so much more. When it comes to staple earthbending techniques, there is no question that Toph was an earthbending master from the start of her journey. Even Bossing Say's highly trained Dai Li agents didn't stand a chance against Toph, thanks in part to her raw earthbending power. But that's not the only aspect of Toph's skill set that makes her so formidable. Let's move on to our second category adaptability. Earthbenders across the world are known for their strong, rigid, and unyielding style of fighting. <laughs> Even Toph herself teaches Aang that to succeed as an earthbender, you have to be rock-like. Rock -like. But what sets Toph apart from the other earthbenders, what truly gives her an advantage over opponents like the Boulder or the Dai Li, may actually stem from her blindness. What many could perceive as a weakness in Toph is actually a major strength. Let's break it down. Her inability to see since birth has forced her to adapt the way she lives her everyday life. For example, since she can't see with her eyes, she learned to harness earthbending to sense the vibrations in the ground, allowing her to assess her surroundings and effectively see with her feet. It's a technique which allows her to better adjust to her blindness in her everyday life, but it's also proven to be a very useful technique in battle against other benders, allowing her to sense and anticipate her opponent's every move. The ability is so useful, in fact, that she even taught the Avatar to use it, and he, in turn, used it to defeat Fire Lord Ozai himself. But as valuable as the skill is, it's a technique that most earthbenders likely don't have or even know exists because they never needed to learn it, giving Toph a valuable advantage over traditional earthbenders. Thanks to her need to adapt, Toph also learned that she could use her seismic sense ability so accurately that she could even sense subtle changes in a person's breath, heartbeat, and general behavior and effectively become a human lie detector. He's not lying. How can you tell? I can feel his breathing and heartbeat. When people lie, there's a physical reaction. He's telling the truth. Yet another infinitely useful technique, born purely out of her need to adapt. Since the fundamentals of most earthbending techniques are to be unchanging and rock-like, it's not very likely that many earthbenders would be open to new ways of approaching a technique like this. Even Toph herself once condemned Aang for thinking like an airbender. That's the problem. You've got to stop thinking like an airbender. There's no different angle, no clever solution, no trickity trick that's going to move Whoa. that rock. You've got to face it head on. She may not even realize it, but even though her very identity is rooted firmly in earthbender principles, she also has plenty of airbender-like tendencies that keep her on her toes and give her the ability to evolve, setting her apart from her fellow earthbenders. Which brings us to our third topic, growth. When Toph first joined Team Avatar, it was clear that she was a strong, rock-like, and slightly abrasive earthbending master. And by the final episode, she was seemingly still that strong, rock-like, and abrasive master. But that doesn't mean she didn't have any growth. It just means we have to look a little deeper. Because Toph's growth is subtle, but still significant. 
the most noticeable effects of her growth come from her bending abilities. She first encounters a style of earthbending that she doesn't have a firm handle on in the episode The Library, when the gang comes across the sandbenders. Having spent her entire life rooted firmly to and reliant on the solid ground, Toph wasn't equipped to deal with the loose and granular sand of the desert like the sandbenders were. But the sandbenders were in a sense cut from the same cloth as Toph herself. Their abilities were born out of necessity. The sandbenders were forced to approach the problem of living in a desert from a different angle than a traditional earthbender would. As a result, they adapted out of necessity to a completely unorthodox style of earthbending. Even though Toph didn't have the need to learn sandbending, she was already familiar with adapting her earthbending. So she was able to hone her sandbending despite its unique nature. This in itself demonstrates Toph's character growth. When she first joined the crew, she shut herself off, claiming to be a loner who didn't need friends. But when her traditional earthbending failed to protect Appa, Sorry, Appa. She was willing to learn a whole new skill. Could that have been to prevent something like that from ever happening again? To make sure she was always capable of protecting the friends she claimed she didn't need. But sandbending pales in comparison to the most obvious example of Toph's growth, metal bending. Not only did she quickly learn and master the skill of metal bending, but she was the first person to even discover that it was possible. Have I ever mentioned how sweet it is that you invented metal bending? You could stand to mention it more. On the surface, yes, it's a significant addition to her arsenal, rounding out her earthbending abilities and fulfilling her physical growth. I am so glad we added you to the group. But it, too, also speaks to her personal and character growth. When she started training Aang, she held firmly to her ideals of remaining unchanging and rock-like disregarding all the adapting she's already had to do in her own life. But when Master Yu and Jin Fu forced her to confront an unyielding metal box, they also unwittingly forced her to think outside the box and confront the unyielding perceptions of earthbending and its applications. And after spending her life using earthbending in unorthodox ways, training an airbender with an affinity for finding workarounds to problems, and encountering entire cultures of people who use their bending differently due to their terrain, Toph finally had to directly embrace the idea of being open to alternate ways of thinking. It was only then that Toph was able to think about the metal in a way that no other earthbender in history had. Woo! Toph, you rule. Her more open-minded approach to earthbending became an invaluable tool for Toph, even bringing about the very discovery of metalbending. It reflects an idea that's seen throughout the series. We're shown the unique strength of each nation's ideology, but we're also shown that true strength is born out of an openness to each other's culture. Aang learns to embrace the philosophies of the four elements. Zuko learns advanced firebending skills using waterbender techniques. And Iroh shows us that much of his wisdom comes from a deep understanding of each nation's culture. It is important to draw wisdom from many different places. If we take it from only one place, it becomes rigid and stale. Understanding others, the other elements, and the other nations will help you become whole. So Toph's character growth, while subtle, is vastly significant because it truly embodies that theme. She's able to represent the culture of the earthbenders, but she also applied airbending philosophies to her approach. She learned to adapt from cultures different from her own, and even learned to challenge the very notion of what's possible. In the end, it's that open-mindedness that allowed Toph to evolve past the perceived limitations of earthbenders. She encouraged progress, not only in herself, but for the world as a whole.